22-point lead to the Cats. Going into the second half. Somerville got up early and won the tap. McGrath played it well. Back to the 50, but the mark taken by Anthony Danaher. Playing up the ground. Short pass to Long. Protected himself well to take the mark. Bombers could be right in this if they kick straight in the second turn. Considine. Anderson. To the attacking 50. Thumped out of there by Darcy, who spent most of the first half on the bench. O'Donnell somehow gets it out. Anderson. Ducks the tackle. Hinkley gets it going forward. Bairstow. A high ball. Scott, not much of a chance here. Good mark to Ezard. Well done by Alan Ezard, running with the flight of the ball. And just kept Scott away from it by only centimetres, which was enough space for Ezard to take the mark. The kick towards the wing, Buse. Good numbers there. Spawn may still get a possession. Handley. And a boundary throw-in will eventually take place. Players endeavouring to keep it in, but... Uh, Ruck contest now. Somerville and Handley. Handley does well. Wanganeen, Thompson and Long. Long with pace. Away he goes. And pass over the top. Will it sit for Hills? Not quite. Goes back further to Long. Slips over. Eventually taps it to Denham. Kick it. Oh, they've messed it up eventually now. And Bruns gets it for Geelong. And they kick it away back towards the centre. And the Cats are a chance here with Poole taking the mark near the centre of the ground. A classic example of a poor handball from Long. And groundless marks the kick. Yes, Lee's got Ed Considine on him now with Danaher coming at the centre half back to pick up Stoneham. But that handball from Long, it's not the handball that was wrong, it was the delivery of the handball. Yes, he set it up nicely, but uh, unfortunately falling at the feet of Paul Hills. Here's Brownless kicking for goal number five, and he puts it straight through the centre. And a good performance by Brownless up at full forward. He's had six kicks and kicked five goals. Yes, and Brian Wood now out to Michael Long. I'm sure talking about that handball. It's cost Essendon a goal. In fact, it could have cost them two because they should have kicked one at the other end. So a two-goal swing for just a poor piece of disposal. Something that players would do a thousand times a week. But under pressure, Long couldn't make it count. Important first goal in the second half to the Cats. Handley gets it back. Darcy. Bairstow. Straight up the centre corridor. Stoneham and Danaher. Poole gets it going forward. Ezard did well. Long. Keen to atone. The hand pass away to Wanganeen. has been pretty quiet. His kick inside half forward. Kick it. Let it go past him. The hand pass out from Wallace. And a kick by Buick. Bounces through. He's kicked four. He's been a good player, Darren Buick Drew. He's had 16 kicks in half a game, a little over half a game, and four goals puts him well up in the category of best players on the ground. Not a bad little handball there from Dean Wallace. Chipped it out to Buick, who now has Steve Hocking minding him. Very tight player, Steve Hocking, so it's a good effort to get away by Darren Buick. I think Wanganeen found out how tight Stephen Hocking can play. Having uh, had to man him in the first half. Kick by Ablett. Centre half forward for Geelong. No mark taken. Thompson goes further back. Harvey. Too fierce for Thompson. Anthony Danaher. Back towards the centre. Gatherers by O'Donnell. Back to Thompson. Thompson vision good. Ezard in support. Ezard's kick to centre half forward. Oh, good effort. Top effort by Terry Danaher. And looking for a 50 metre penalty. The veteran. Cagey as ever, but it's not forthcoming. Yes, and Considine coming off the ground. Kranzberg coming on for Essendon. Oh, Wallace should have nearly taken the mark. Anderson has bumped out of it. Chris Danaher leaves it behind. Through comes O'Donnell. Tries to get it to Ter Terry Danaher. Poole, O'Donnell. Still O'Donnell. Taps it to Ezard. Ezard's quick kick to full forward. There's a real hassle. Oh, hockey. Not ball. penalised. Still with the ball underneath, and a trip is being awarded, and Geelong will take the free kick, much to the disgust of the Essendon fans. And away go Geelong through McGrath. He kicks it back to the wing. Kick it, good, but interferes with Poole. Not kick it, long it was. And Poole will take the free kick for Geelong. Free kicks are 16 each. 
but it, gee, it looked as though Buick should have taken one then. And Thompson marks at half back. Up towards centre wing, Somerville. Salmon still off the ground for the Bombers. He kicked four goals in the first quarter and then damaged his knee. Kicked by Somerville. Terry Danaher in front again of Darcy. Can't take the mark this time. Spawn loses it. O'Donnell goes back to Ezard. He pokes it out into space. Kick it. Gets a bad bounce. Mansfield comes back into the play. Kicked by Mansfield. For Scott. Spawn from behind by Hills. Denham. Spawn to Hills. Short of O'Donnell. Just about threw it out to Spawn. Play on says the umpire. Spawn centres. Wallace the only chance for the Bombers. Well, Buick's been there leading goal kicker with Salmon, but he couldn't get to it this time. And out of defence, Handley for Geelong. Half back, Poole. Well played by Anderson. But now best over the Cats. 50 metre kick, half back to half forward. Punch down, Stoneham. Forceman, good vision to Ablett. He hasn't kicked a goal yet. This will be his first. Six minutes into the third quarter. Well, great play from Geelong. It started with Barry Stoneham, who handballed off. Gary Ablett finished up with the ball. He kicks his first for the day, and he's 546th in his career. He's kicked 32 goals for the year. He's been averaging almost five goals a game, and for a player that plays a majority on the ball, that's an outstanding return as Dean Wallace comes off the ground for Ed Considine. Play restarted, back near the centre. Good effort by Somerville, but Hinkley's there to chop it off. Kick back towards centre half forward was good. Anthony Danaher leaves it behind. Not bad play by Denham, but put the player under pressure. Out there was Hills. He gets a quick kick. Wide to the wing. Hinkley with space. Anderson a little too late. But Hinkley gets his kick away to half forward. No mark taken. These aren't under pressure. Handball wider still. Anthony Danaher gets a little mixed up. He's dragged off the football by Stoneham. Play on says the umpire. In goes Buse. Away to Scott. Scott's kick. Vacant centre half forward position. Ball bounces awkwardly. O'Donnell, Cransberg. Essendon out of trouble. Harvey has a good look and kicks it in towards the centre where Danaher. That's Chris. Thompson trying to drag a player forward to himself, but he's forced to kick high. Centre half forward, kick it. A little bump. Was it too early? No, says the umpire. And Geelong's defence is standing up brilliantly. Stephen Hawking's little kick has been marked by Scott. And away go the Cats. Handball over the top to Bruns. Bruns has kicked the half forward. Marking contest. No one can quite control it. In comes Forsman. Forsman's kick. Chopped off by Somerville, who's doing very well for Essendon. His high kick. He's going to give it up straight away. Bruns, running with the flight of the ball, can't quite mark. Handballs it back. Hinkley always seems to have plenty of time and puts it to Bairstow, who marks wide of the centre. 103 plays 75. Geelong starting to take control. Ablett! Well, strangely, he was goalless in the first quarter. But who knows how many he might finish up with after getting on the board after six minutes in the third. And two minutes later, lining up for his second. Well, once again, we see Essendon penalised for a turnover, a poor kick from Somerville. He elected to go with a torpedo on the run. Very difficult, rather than the drop punt. And Ablett should make him pay the price. Ablett kicks from 49 metres. A goal. <laughs> 17 7 to 10 15. This will just goes to show how costly a poor kick can be from Somerville. Finishes up with Gary Ablett, who's coming into his own in this third quarter. He's had a good battle with O'Donnell dur during the day. Both have had reasonable possessions, but two quick goals in this quarter has Ablett on top at present. Seventeen minutes remaining in the quarter. Handley wins for the Cats. Thompson. Hawking couldn't take the mark. Off hands to uh, Darcy. Out to centre wing. Long from behind. Wanganeen caught in Poole's tackle. 
Forsman accidentally socket backwards, regathered his own ball to Buse. He stumbled, he's losing it, out number three to one. Then he applies the tackle on Anderson. Thompson, good hand pass to Chris Danaher. Here's kick to full forward. Kick it. Push this time, surely. Right in front, the free kick. Against Miles, or oh, Mansfield. Yes, he was out of position, Mansfield. He made a desperate lunge, gave the penalty away. And kick it lines up. He's been an effective player all day, kick it. Given a lot of drive to Essendon. He should register his second goal. Kick by Derek Kickett. Goal umpire doesn't move. His second. But it's three goals to two. The Cats favour third quarter. Yes, I saw Michael Mansfield play well on Andrew Jarman last week down at Cadinia Park, across half back. And I'm sure he's a player in the making, but on that occasion, he was just out position, an excellent kick into Kickett. And he had to make the desperate lunge, giving away the penalty, push in the back. Essendon still not out of this game. And Hanley doing fairly well. There's a trip on Buse. Fairly obvious. Play on. Hinkley. Gee, mops up beautifully across that half-back line. Kick towards the full forward area. Hanley caught. Shrugs the tackle. Caught again. Should be penalised. Now the advantage is with the Bombers. He's hurt his ankle too, Handley. And away go Essendon from half-back. Kick is by Denham. The half-forward. Kick it. Takes a good mark. Looking to play on, I feel. And not being given the opportunity there by Mansfield. So Derek Kickett will have to go back and kick. Oh, that wasn't a bad play there. Long running. Kickett gets rid of Poole. Then handballs to Long, but the umpire having nothing of it, so kick it. Has to go back. Now he's kicked some bombs here in the past. Tries to get onto the torpedo. Drops in short. Easy mark to Geelong. Taken by Darcy. Where all good defenders should be in front of the pack. Handball away. Hinkley. Little kick. Not bad. Riccardi. Riccardi on that far side half-back area. Kick towards half forward. Anthony Danaher, recovery is very, very good. And he runs away. Kicks it in towards full forward. Anderson. Well done, Greg Anderson. Could he nearly have been paid? No. Handley rebounds away to McGrath and Geelong are out of trouble. Centre wing. Stoneham wrestles with Anthony Danaher. Bairstow and Chris Danaher. Oh, Bairstow, you might be holding it. Umpire calls for the boundary throw in. Here's the third quarter handball stats. We see Essendon with much more possession there with the handball. 24 to 9. 83 to 49 for the game. At the back, Denham to Wanganeen. Threads out the hand pass to Thompson. Forward of the wing. His pass astray and the mark to Darcy. They are breaking down up forward, Essendon. They are a little bit hamstrung because two of their options, Salmon and Dean Wallace, are both injured on the bench. What about that kick? It was a shocker. He kicked it straight to the opposition. 233s against each other. Forceman spoils Hills and the ball out of play. Had plenty of work, the MCG, and it's not over yet because tomorrow they'll play their third game in three days here after the stateside trained here during the week. Riccardi. Well done, Hinkley. Forceman. Buick's been one of Essendon's best, but this time he fumbles the ball out of play. Darren Buick's kicked four, Salmon kicked four before quarter time and then left the ground in the second quarter with an injured knee. Boundary throw in just forward of the wing in uh, Essendon's attacking half. Somerville to Spawn. Spawn's kick is effective up to the 50 metre line and Kickett marks. Actually he's inside 50 metres and he's going to go for goal, Derry Kickett. A lovely kick. It's a, Oh no, it's just missed to the left hand side. And you can see that look of disappointment written all over Derek Kickett's face. 13 minutes left. Geelong lead by 27 points as Miles prepares to kick it back into play and he comes to this near side. Not a bad kick either. And Hinkley marks. Gee, Gee look at his stats between. again. 15 and 2. Yes, yeah, an excellent game. Dominated down at Cadinia Park last week. It's in great form. And if fumbles were a stat, he wouldn't have a fumble. Handy, a terrific hand pass to Bruns. He's made a great return. He kicked two goals in the first quarter. Ablett 
He hasn't got the mark, but I tell you what, watch the goal. Gary Ablett, you little beauty. And if you don't mind, umpire. Oh, that is just what footy fans love to see. It was the classic pieces of, of evasion as Handley comes off for a rest. Heffernan goes on. In fact, there was 21 players on the ground there for a split second in time. But Gary Ablett, you're a genius, and you've just given us one of the highlights of the year. What a classic sidestep. Morris Rioli time. Well, there's only one Gary Ablett, Jared, and uh, no wonder he's referred to as God. I think the only way you could stop him through Kryptonite. Geelong lead by 33 points, thanks to a magnificent goal by Ablett. Bruns, Darcy, Geelong now through Riccardi. High kick, Anthony Danaher gets rid of Stoneham. Attempted kick off the ground, Wanganoon leaves it behind. Hughes nearly. Forsman, kick off the ground by Thompson, goes back to the wing. Bruns gathers nicely. He spotted someone. The kick is a bit high, though. And a good effort by Spawn, marking behind Heffernan. Spawn's kick to half forward. And kick it takes a good mark. The pressure wasn't bad by Mansfield, but kick it is marked. He's been a great worker today, kick it. Essendon just lacking a couple of tall forwards with Salmon on the bench. Kick into the pocket. No mark taken. It's punched away. In goes Long. Oh, it does very well. Saw O'Donnell, fed it out the back. O'Donnell's kick is pinpoint. No. Chris Danaher had it and left it. Away go Geelong through Scott. He's caught by Somerville. And now another good tackle. But they're not rewarded. And Geelong get out of trouble. The ball goes wide. Hinkley, little kick. Riccardi left it behind. Bit down behind play is Hills. Essendon up towards full forward. No mark taken. Chance down for Buick. Deep in the pocket. There's a duster. Kick it and runs. And the ball goes over for a boundary throw in. In the right forward pocket. The Bomber fans aren't happy. Kick it into the action. And things have hotened up here at the MCG. The nasty incident off the ball involving Hills and Hocking. And the Bomber fan players are incensed by that. Bombers and Kick it saw it. And Danaher's run the length of the field. But Geelong are into attack. The ball up towards full forward. All players overrunning it. Into the pocket. Buse and Wanganeen. Down goes Buse. Players throwing themselves in now. Gay Abandon. A free kick and well done, umpire. Because you had to take control. It was getting out of hand as Young Hills comes off the ground. And hopefully he's all right. Well, this is going to get better now after that. I'm sure that Essendon will want to exact some sort of retribution. At centre-half, forward for Geelong. They're going to get a goal. Ablett over the top. Stoneham into an open goal. He doesn't miss those bellies, Stoneham. And Geelong answer very quickly. The lead has been stretched now to 39 points. Yes, I guess that's one way of settling it down. Stoneham taking full advantage. Kicking a terrific goal. But all the action was down behind play with Stoneham with the ball. And Hills walked off the ground or trotted off, so perhaps it wasn't as much in that incident. Gee, all the Essendon players wanted to have a go with Stephen Hocking. Long goes off the ground. Here go the Cats again. McGrath comes out wide. Poole's got plenty of space to skirt around Anthony Danaher. He's got Stoneham in short. He goes longer than that to Brownless. Punch from behind, doesn't clear the area. Brown! Offline, up behind. One goal, two to Paul Brown. Brownless has kicked five. Stoneham's kicked four. Ablett's kicked three, all in this quarter, Gary Ablett. And the margin's now 40 points. The kick into Wanganeen. Under nine and a half minutes to go to three-quarter time. Considine, spoiled by McGrath. Poole shrugged the tackle, too easily. Poole over to Ablett, 60 metres out. He puts on the gas and is buried. Lost it. O'Donnell the hand pass to Ezard and Ablett's down hurt. He's hurt his hip, Gary Ablett. Oh, this is a tragedy for footy. Centre of the ground, here goes uh, Somerville. Ablett is hurt. Well, he tried to take on the pack. 
and was crunched from behind. Up on the play, Spawn goes back to Considine, who got Ablett. Miles can't take the mark. This game hotting up in the third quarter, don't worry about that. Terry Danaher skirts around, his kick won't make it. And Riccardi the wingman back in the goal square. Well, Gary Ablett is up on his feet. Wonderful footy. Sensational stuff at the MCG. The fans who have made the effort to be here today have been treated to something very special. G. Ablett one end, D. Kick at the other, and Kick it has now got his third goal. And Ablett is back on his feet. Well, a sensational mark from Derek Kick it. We know he's a man of immense talent. Kicks the unbelievable goal, and on that occasion took a fantastic mark. But there's just highlight after highlight here. Superman goes down at one end, kicker takes mark of the day, then plays on. This is a terrific game of football. Derek kick at three goals. Buick and Paul Salmon have each kicked four for Essendon. 19-8 plays 12-16. Difference is 34 points in favour of Geelong. Good punch. Oh, Thompson, captain, courageous. Goes after the footy with determination. And the umpire forced now to bounce between the centre of the ground and centre half forward for Geelong. Was it Geelong's number five who was down hurt? You wouldn't know it the way he charged at that one. Nearly eight minutes left. Buick kicks it out of midair. Punched away by Poole. Nearly gathered by Considine. Wanganeen, off the ground McGrath, goes wide, Denham leads, and Bruns, good tackle, Denham gets his kick away, it's marked by Riccardi, Riccardi will kick Geelong up towards centre half forward, not bad, Brownless jumps too early, Scott roving beautifully, Scott, oh great Rovers goal from the pocket, Robert Scott has now kicked three, the Geelong goal kickers really causing Essendon plenty of problems. Yes, a great goal from Geelong. Riccardi brought that ball down, speared the ball into Brownless. Probably should have taken the mark under a bit of pressure from Kranzberg. But Robert Scott at the base of the pack picked it up, kicked his third goal. He's in terrific form and has gained Victorian selection. Well, can the Cats become the first team ever to kick 200 points three weeks in a row? They've got a fair bit of way to go, but you wouldn't like the back against them. McGrath a good spoil. Riccardi a good dodge. Gets the hand pass away to Forsman. The Cats on a roll now. Stoneham pushed out. Free kick Barry Stoneham. Oh, look at Anthony Gannett. Look, what is he supposed to do? Stood his ground, chested the bloke. Well, the man in front's got... Uh, he holds all the aces. Cart blanche. Big Bazza looks like he's going to go for the torpedo punt. Now he swings onto the drop punt. 55 metres out for Stoneham. It'll test him. Well, he got the distance, no worries, but hooked it and kicked it behind. Well, it's 40 points of difference here. In fact, 41 now. But you'd think the game was a finals one point of difference the way it's being played. Well, it's been quite intense right from the start. That could nearly be a free kick to Essendon. Jumping a little too early there, I think, was Darcy. And Terry Danaher will take the free kick at half back. Essendon fans are quite happy with that. They believe that they haven't been given much of a go, but uh, O'Donnell, player on his own at half forward, is Spawn. Spawn, he must kick this goal. He won't get the distance. It's into the square. Kick oh. it! Jared, that is absolutely magic, isn't it? Fantastic play from Kicker. Running with the flight of the play. Dean Wallace was down there. Couldn't ma manage to mark it, but Kicker kicks another goal for Essendon. You know what? This guy came over from Western Australia to play football with North Melbourne. Couldn't find his, uh, well, satisfactory arrangements at North Melbourne. Nearly looked as though he was going to be lost to the caper and go back to WA. Essendon picked him up. In and a I'm controversial sure a lot of question marks against it weren't there. Mm. Well, he, played, he played with four different clubs in four years. From Perth to Adelaide to North Melbourne to Essendon. Mench has just come back onto the ground. Michael Mansfield has limped off, obviously, with a leg injury. But he has treated us as some fantastic highlights today. 
Derek Kickett. Well, a couple of the great stars of this game have treated us in this quarter. Kickett has kicked three goals and Ablett has kicked three goals in this third quarter. Wanganeen out of the middle. Kickett's there again. Hands to it. Don't count him out of a chance here either. Mensch. Hocking got back there. And the ball goes through for a behind. Derek Kickett giving his all there in the pack. He's had nine marks, 21 possessions, and has kicked four goals, three of them in this quarter. And he just got his foot to that ball too and kicked it behind. Kick in. Somerville a punch from behind. Ball to be won at the 50 metre line. Wanganeen. Anderson just gets his little left foot to it. Hocking off the ground. It's long. It's over the boundary line on the full. And the free kick to be taken out there by Terry Danaher. There's no. always a danger when you just go for the big blase kick off the ground. Stephen Hocking, who's playing on kick it. Short pass to Chris, his brother, doesn't come off. Too many Geelong players. Away goes Darcy, forced to kick quickly. No one home. Anderson and... Oh, a chance here for Spawn. Anderson, shot for goal by Anderson. Kick it, has got it again! <laughs> oh, this is a sideshow within a, a royal show. Well, you're spot on. Oh, he's made a mess of it. He's made a mess of it. No, he's going to have to go back and have another kick because uh, the umpire had blown time on, umpire Dennis Rich. So Derek Kickett, maybe you can make amends now with a second crack at it. Yes, we attempted the banana kick there and just hurried it a little bit, put it outside the right-hand goalpost, but the way this bloke's been playing, you wouldn't back against him kicking it. Oh, dear, it's fantastic. Really is great stuff to watch. Very skillful players playing this difficult game of Australian rules with the oval ball and they make it look so simple at times let's have a look at what Derek Kicker can do with this on Derek Kicker because he's going to pull a rabbit out of a hat very shortly. That was an unbelievable moment in football. He got himself into more trouble than Ned Kelly and then inexplicably he pulled himself out and still managed to kick one of the goals of the day. Five goals to kick it. Stephen Hawking hit the wrong bloke. Back in the centre. 28 points the difference and Essendon, or should I say kick it, have made a big comeback. You seem to like that goal, Robert. Uh, I, love, I just love watching. Very skillful players do the difficult thing so well. Kick it's kicked four goals in the quarter. Besto and uh, Denham, former teammates, having a bit of a dust up. Free kick out of the middle, Danaher. Punch out by Stone and back in defence. Wanganeen from behind. Gavin Wanganeen, no goals but three behinds. And the inaccuracy has been costly for the Bombers. It's 32 scoring shots to 29, but they trail by 27 points. And one more goal in the last three and a half minutes before three quarter time for Essendon will set up a fantastic last quarter. McGrath is going to get caught, but he gets his kick away wide towards the boundary line. Chance for Anderson. Caught and well done by Trevor Poole. No free kick given away. Anderson hemmed in boundary throw-in will take place. Well, Blight obviously a little bit worried. He has got Stoneham up onto the ball. Brownless has come out the centre forward, and that's a movie reserves for crisis times, usually about the 20-minute mark. Mark Bairstow there being tackled quite well, quite effectively, fairly. So umpire Russo will call for a bounce. We've got three minutes left in the third quarter. It's been a, well, to say it's been entertaining would be an understatement. Considine, Poole, Ablett into the action, still the ball to be won. Chris Danaher's got it, can't get away before the umpire blows his whistle. And I just feel if there's no clean position out of this, a free kick may be forthcoming. Somerville, Stoneham, there's the free kick from the ruck contest and it goes to Stoneham. Free kicks are actually 21 to 19 in favour of Essendon. The Essendon fans wouldn't believe it if you told them. Wanganeen. 
looking for Anthony Danaher. Riccardi gets him away. He's over the ball for a fair time. Comes back to Anthony Danaher. He goes towards the outer side. Thompson. The skipper can set something up. A shepherd by a long off the ball. Thompson's kicked not the ball. Just up being marked by Wallace inside the 50. I think he must have a shot here because uh, to give it up so close to three-quarter time would be quite critical. I'd hoist it in the air for kick it. He's in the goal square. It's like a magnet to Derek Kickett this quarter. One and three quarter minutes left. Well, he went for the goal and kicked the behind. they yeah, costly behind. Essen really did need that goal. They still trail by a fair margin. Well, I'm sure that they feel quite confident. They've still had more possessions than Geelong. They haven't quite been able to put the score on the board. Kick in by Miles, goes to the far side. And what a great mark taken by Stoneham. He mentioned Jarrett about his value in the AFL. And I'm sure his peers hold him in such high regard. A wonderful player, Barry Stoneham. The kick towards right half forward. Punched away from Brownless. In comes Forsman. Looked as though he was nearly going to stop still. Kicked towards the forward pocket. And there's the champion at the other end. Ablett, who looked in all sorts of trouble earlier in this quarter, has marked for him well within scoring distance. Just checking with the umpire to make sure that the player on the mark was... Actually, the ground's a bit holding over there. If he really unloads from there, he might just uh, slip a bit. The old practice wicket area. Well, no doubt about the uh, positive attitude of Gary Ablett. And have a look at the kick. Have a look at the kick. It just missed. There was a little bit of doubt on the goal umpire's mind there. And Gary Ablett having a good look at it. 14-19. Plays 20 goals, 10. As Harvey will kick in for maybe the last passage of play before three-quarter time. He comes to the member's side. No mark taken. It's punched back towards half forward. Oh, O'Donnell. It went straight through him. Harvey's got it. Kicks it back near the centre. Considine. Can't quite mark. The ball awkwardly. At the back, Stoneham. Stoneham's kick into the pocket. The siren has sounded. Trevor Poole will have to give the ball up. And at three-quarter time, Geelong lead by 27 points. 20 goals, 10. Essendon, 14, 19. Well, here we go. The last quarter at the MCG in what has been a very, very entertaining game so far. Somerville, up high, Considine, hemmed in, going nowhere. Umpire will bounce once again. Goal kickers for Geelong till three-quarter time. Brownless five, Stoneham four, Gary Ablett and Scott three each. For Essendon, four each to Salmon and Buick. Five, the leading goal scorer, Derek Kickett, and what a fantastic display his has been. Chris Danaher, Ablett gets his foot to the ball, kicks it wide, no mark taken. Thompson is there, held by Forsman, and Thompson will take the free kick. Looking to give it off. Must kick it now, all players are covered. No, he does decide to go into centre-half back where Considine takes it. He kicks it towards centre-forward, Essendon marks certainly. Danaher, away he goes to brother Anthony. Oh, terrible kick. Spawn leaves it behind, Riccardi. Just gets his foot to the ball and saves Geelong from what could have been a possible goal for Essendon. And yes, Anthony Danaher kick was very ordinary. We have seen a few mistakes made on that uh, heavy side of the ground, but uh, Geelong's highest ever score against Essendon is 26-18, 174 and 1936. And the way that Geelong have been kicking goals of late, one would expect that to be broken today. Yes, and yet, and yet watch the Bombers because they've been a comeback team this year. There's a free kick and run against Gary Abbott. Uh, in round six against Melbourne, they came from 48 points down to pip the Demons by a point. And they also came back against Fitzroy. They got an absolute hiding to three-quarter time and kicked 11 goals in the last quarter but still lost. So the Bombers have finished games and this time they're less than five goals down. Mind you, they're without Salmon, who's off injured. Oh, great hand pass through the pack by Stoneham to Ablett. Now to Bruns, and wide open for the uh, Cats. Well, they queued up to get that. Three of the line. Brownless took 
It was a poor, poor uh, decision by Terry Danaher, I think, to kick the ball from centre wing into centre half forward when there was no real certain possession on for Essendon. And Geelong just swept it away from centre half back. And when you don't take possession, the opposition can be in attack so quickly. Brown for his sixth goal. Poster. That's his first miss. So he's about one centimetre off being perfect. Particularly, Robbo, if you lose that ball along the corridor, and by golly, have Geelong played the centre corridor of this ground so well today. They've won a track down the middle of the ground. <laughs> Harvey kicks it in for Essendon, into centre half back, no mark taken. Darcy leaves it behind. Chance for Bairstow, shrugs the tackle, too high, was it? He's holding the ball. Now, Mark Bairstow went for his shoulder or his head, indicating that it should have been a free kick, but no nonsense stuff by Essendon. Denham. Wide at a bat, Wanganeen. Wanganeen gets onto the right foot. Little kick. Or oh, they must get this, they do, through Somerville in the centre of the ground. Sweeping hand pass. Ezar gets his kick away. It's an awful kick. Bad option there by Somerville. Out comes Darcy. Has a good look. Handball over the top from Stoneham went to Forsman. Forsman's kick is a shot. Out of bounds on the full. And all of a sudden, Geelong's finishing is not as exemplary as it had been in the first three quarters. Well, it's one of the few skill errors I've seen Forsman make. He doesn't get a hell of a lot of the ball. Interchanges with Mark Bairstow, and Bairstow takes the percentage, the greater percentage of time on the ball, but on that occasion, a poor kick from Forsman. Kick by O'Donnell. Danaher almost, not paid. Comes to Scott. Kick by Robert Scott. Brownless behind the centre. Dishes out the hand pass. Here's the defender, Ken Hinkley. Will he kick a goal? 52 metres out. The hand pass wide to Buse. It sits up beautifully. And Andrew Buse will kick it. And that all created by a game. Maybe O'Donnell, do you think the option to Terry Danaher was a good one? Well, half forward for Essendon. Certainly had to be marked, and Essendon have fallen down badly because they haven't had the marking power of Geelong. But once again, Ken Hinckley just gets better every time I see him. He was on the burst, received the ball, Kieran Spawn was left in his wake, and unselfishly, rather than shooting from outside 50, he handballed it to Andrew Buse. He's been a little bit quiet and allowed him to run in and kick his first goal. Well, again, the Geelong goal kick is mounting. They've got 10 today already. A couple of weeks ago when they kicked the record score, they had something like 12 or 13 goal scorers. Essendon marked to Considine, wide of centre-half forward. He plays on quickly. The kick towards full forward. At the back, Wallace. He's got it. Well, that was as good a mark as you'd want to see. A high leap from behind. And eventually taking the mark on his chest. been persevered with over a period of about two or three years now by Kevin Sheedy. Suffered a few injuries. Still only a young man. And has played a, a total of 44 games after making his debut in 1987. Yet to kick a goal. Oh dear. Three behinds alongside Dean Wallace's name. That's one of the reasons why many a critic doubt whether this fellow will go on with the job. Can't finish when he gets the opportunities. What a shocking mess that was. Miles in the back pocket. Stone him with a run at them, but in front, Chris Danaher. Done a good job on Bearstow. Kick by Danaher in the direction of kick it or Wallace. Oh, Wallace, another good mark. And a fine hand pass to Spawn from 30 metres. He goals. First goal to Kieran Spawn. And this game is far from over. You mentioned about the big run that Essendon had at Melbourne. Footy's a funny game, isn't it? There's 35 scoring shots to 32. The only place it's been one-sided today is on the scoreboard. Essendon have been competitive all over the ground. They have lost, they have lacked a little bit in the height department, particularly with Paul Salmon going off with that wretched knee injury. And let's hope that's not serious. But in all other departments, they've been very, very good. 
Essendon must kick a succession of goals. Somerville, who's been very, very good. Tireless around the centre. Underneath that is Denham. Umpire will call for a bounce. There was one area that Geelong have dominated other than, than on the scoreboard is in centre bounce takeaways. 20 plays 12, which gives them a massive start. Denham taps it on. Ball to be won. Riccardi may be bustled out of it by Long. No. Bairstow goes to McGrath. McGrath's kick wide to the wing. No one home. Anderson gathers it. Hooks the kick to centre half forward. No mark taken. Riccardi comes away. Tries the big torpedo. Goes up towards centre half forward. No mark taken. Thompson strong. Anthony Danaher stands his ground. Away goes Denham. The kick into the pocket. Oh, good effort. He made the ground nicely, Wallace, and he's marked. Oh, he's kicked it across the centre half forward and given it up. Well, Jared, you mentioned just a minute ago that his finishing is very ordinary, and have a look at him. There's no point holding your hands up to your head, Dean Wallace. It's all been done. Well, he had option down the forward line. There was Kickett, who has been Mr Magic today on his own, but he elected to go centre and lost it. 50 metre penalty, and Ablett couldn't take the mark on the 50. Harvey to Thompson, good running by Kranzberg, and the Bombers still getting more of the ball in this last quarter than the Cats. They trail by 27 points. Must go for Terry Danaher here. In short to Anderson. Back half of the centre square. Kicked by Greg Anderson to Terry Danaher. Nominated by Robbo. He was dragged down. He'll take the three. Oh, it had to be playing. Oh, that, that was advantage that time. Plenty of times you see it when it isn't. But it's got to come back to Terry Danaher. Or it is going back to Terry Danaher. It really does put Essendon at a disadvantage. It gives Geelong an opportunity to pick up all their men. Oh! Wanganin charged front on by Buse. Well done, Wanganin getting up. He knows there's a game to be won here. Hasn't staged for it as often a lot of players do. Just gets up and gets on with a caper. Wallace has marked everything in this quarter and he's giving a lead away from the goal square. He goes in the direction of Kickett. One hand not enough at the back, Scott. No free kick for that. Yes, Lil yes, fans wanted it. It was a free kick to, to Geelong. Made the advantage on that. Yeah. Goes it. Pool. He tunnels it. Anderson. The Bombers dominating the ball at the minute. Wanganeen with the ball on centre wing. Away to Denham. Look to try and give it away again, but decided on the kick, and it's a good one. It's been marked by Izard. Izard is inside 50. Can he kick the goal? That's the reason that Essendon couldn't play on. That was a mark to Terry Danaher, and umpires have been instructed that no advantage can be played after a mark's been taken. Izard looks for distance. Kick into the square. It's thumped away by the Geelong defence. A boundary throw-in will take place as Barry Stoneham gets back strongly in the last line of defence. 27 points, the advantage for the Cats. Nearly halfway through. Considine takes it out of the ruck contest and kicks it behind. Well, it's been a real tragedy that Salmon went down. He kicked four first quarter goals and was absolutely dominating everything after Geelong got away to a great start. But one just gets the feeling if they had that focus up forward that this result would be a hell of a lot closer. Kick in by David Mensch. 60 metres. Stone in middle of the pack. Can't mark. Best over the hand pass over the top. Cool, quieter today. Scott, good pace. Robert Scott dashing away from them. Centering kick, Brownless. He's swamped. Bruns, welcome back to league footy. footy. Neville Bruns. Two goals in the first quarter, but that one's offline. Handball option was there. Drew. Bruns drew the player. Ablett on his own. I bet you wouldn't have given the hand pass away most from Most definitely, Robbo. Most definitely. Straight for goal. Two goals, two Bruns. He dives at this one. Keeps it going Geelong's way. Brown, the hand pass in. A real scrap. Right in front of goals, about 30 metres out. Ball up. Gee, there was a good effort in there by the last man to get up. I think it was Wanganeen or Gary O'Donnell. One of them. It's been a good battle between he and Ablett. My word. But just to dispossess the Geelong player was terrific. Brownless over the top. Can't take it. Denham kicks it back near the centre. Long. Handball by Considine, tap on, gives Long the chance. Sweeping hand pass into the path of Anderson, who loves to kick it long. He doesn't get onto it. Hinkley intercepted well. Kick it. Hocking, tripped, held. Don't worry about it. Go on with the football. 
Mench receives. Kicks it back near the centre. Mark is taken by Poole. Poole plays on quickly. Kicks it to centre half forward. Well done. Adler's dropped it though. And the umpire will call for a bounce. Wasn't it a great chase by Ken Hinkley down at the other end of the ground to put the pressure on uh, who was that? That was Anderson, which made Essendon fluff that. Now it's back in Geelong's forward line. Belly Brownless. Thompson. Kick off the side of his boot. And it's marked. Well marked by Riccardi. And this boy can kick the ball. Gives it away. Oh, Brownless. Equally distant from goal. Actually, Riccardi can only kick it and get it, too. Now Brownless, who kicks the ball prodigious distances. Doesn't quite get onto it. It's into the square. It's touched over the line for a behind to Geelong. Yeah, they didn't make good contact that, on that occasion. I was watching that closely, and the ball just rolled forward on his foot at contact, creating what we generally call a mongrel punt. Kick in by Harvey. Danger. Thompson in the back pocket. Danaher and Spawn comes to the front to Bruns. The backhander by Bruns. Darcy. Miles. Up to the 50. But the mark dropped down there by Heffernan. The first gamer, Riccardi. Right. Denham's hand pass. Got one over the shoulder. Advantage three. Michael Long goes for a dash. He's got too much pace for Billy Brownless. But Brownless forced him into a bad kick anyway, just kicking Hope out into space. Mench. And Darcy. Well, we've got 13 minutes left, and the Cats hanging on. They lead by 28 points. Essendon have thrown everything at them and have succeeded everywhere but on the scoreboard. O'Donnell. A hand pass wide. Ezard. At half-back flank. Block. Comes to Adler. The hand pass is a beauty to Bruns. He runs inside 50. Gives it further afield to Scott. And it's a Geelong goal. Robert Scott, four goals, one in each quarter. And that one started with the block hand pass by Adler. Yeah, much better play from Neville Bruns. He drew the player after receiving the handball from Adler. An interesting, well, a fantastic interception from Adler. And the ball resulted with a Robert Scott goal who's once again turned it on for the Geelong fans and he's kicked four goals for the day and in fantastic form. They have all the answers, the Cats. Somerville in the ruck. O'Donnell had it, but taken away by Thompson. Thompson's kicked the half forward. Kick it interfered with by Hocking. Play goes on. Kick it. Oh, well done. Back there by Minch. Forced... But Derek kick it. Kick it a, to go out of bounds on the full. It was a poor handball in the first place because... Predictable? Well, it's predictable, but Minch was coming forward. He was obviously going to get on to uh, kick it if he had, if he, when he handballed it, so there was no advantage to Weston either way. Big punch by Somerville on Stoneham. And a boundary throw in right on the players' interchange area. Because I suppose if Wallace balks the hand pass, Minch goes for the other player, and he ducks back onto his... Uh, natural kicking foot and he has a shot for goal but uh, that's what the good players can do here's Considine away to Buick play goes on no it's a free kick and it's right. going to Geelong to be taken back there by McGrath I said there was a little bit of a throw in there he got Considine for it McGrath he's kicked to centre half forward oh the first gamer Heffernan well done he got an absolute spanking in the first quarter from Salmon and Salmon kicked four goals, came off the ground, he's back now, he's taken just one mark and had three possessions, and with some coaching from Billy Brownless, will he get his first goal in league football? 52 metres out. Good effort. Just a little bit short. Brown. Oh, great. Man. Scott! Five goals to Scott! Cats on a roll again, 23 goals to 15. Well, that was a classic handball from Paul Brown. Hasn't had the best of days, he has been in good form during the last month. 
but he handballed that one to the voice. Dumb found it, both the Essendon players that were in chase. And Robert Scott just kicks the easiest goal from the goal line. A sensational handball. Yes, well, Paul Brown has had a reasonably quiet day by his terms. Only one goal, but uh, that can nearly be credited to him. Essendon go up towards half forward. Stephen Hocking way out to Anderson, but it's picked off by Poole. Poole's kick, not bad, across his body. Hooked it back closer to the centre. Anthony Danaher has done a pretty good job. Handball over the top. O'Donnell looking to give the hand pass. No. Short pass into the pocket. It doesn't quite roll for Spawn. But away goes Wanganeen from inside 50. Long kick by Gavin Wanganeen. Is it Essendon goal? Well done. First goal to Wanganeen. He's kicked three behinds before that. So Essendon, who will not lie down, get their 16th, but they still trail 16-21, Geelong at 23-13. 16 possessions to Gavin Wanganeen, the young 18-year-old. Has had a fairly quiet day. Stephen Hocking put him out of business early in the piece. And has come into it a little bit in this last quarter, which is probably the best for him for the game. Cats, three goals, two in this last quarter. If they can kick 8-1, they'll top 200 points for the third week in a row. Brown, almost a mark. He's still after it, Brown. You wouldn't discount the Cats' chances either, the way they've been kicking goals recently. Here's Riccardi, off the left boot. Nobody at home! Oh. First goal of the day to Peter Riccardi, a first-year player, and didn't he love that one? Well, a great goal from Riccardi and Coke. Off the wing, off the one step. He's bombed that 60 metres. Robbo suggested earlier that he could kick the ball, and he really did show us on that occasion that on that left boot, he can kick it 60 metres, no trouble. Just rolled it through from the boundary line. Well, another accumulation of goal kickers for Geelong this afternoon. That's their 10th. Their leading goal scorers have been Scott with five. Brownless with five. Free kick out of the uh, centre bounce, and it's uh, going to stone him. Play on now. Hinkley. Little kick. Chopped off by Anthony Danaher. Under pressure. Denham. Harvey. Gets his kick away. It's not bad. Out in the Considine direction. McGrath. And Tim McGrath does pretty well in the finish. Riccardi there giving him a pat on the head. Robbo, I saw two weeks ago in Carrara when the Cats had a sniff of a record, they really went for it. And I'm sure that they had 200 points in mind. My word. And that's the key to Geelong today. They've had a couple of, uh, well, not lean years, particularly 1990 was ordinary. But 1991, they played very well and were a bit stiff in the finals. And I'm sure they've got determination is the key word down at Cadinia Park. They know they've got the... Uh, the team that can kick winning scores week in week out Bruns has caught Eastman, gee they were nearly a chance Bruns professionalism held them up Denham kicked a half forward oh top effort a real top effort there by Somerville and I am very impressed with this young man I'm sure a year or so ago people at Eastman probably wondered whether he's going to kick on but uh, he's been fantastic in the ruck and getting quite a few possessions around the ground. He's had 25 hit-outs and 15 touches, and that was a commendable piece of agility. He's shooting for goal from 40 metres out directly in front. Slight hesitation in the run-up, but the kick is a goal. Well done. <laughs> Peter Somerville gets his first goal for the day. And Essendon, 17-21. Well... I've been saying it all day. They trail by 26 points, but they just can't quite get close enough. The Cats, 24 goals, 13. Yes, well, Kevin Sheedy compares Somerville to Roger Merritt and says at the same time his development is well ahead of Merritt, so perhaps we've got a champion in the making. Eight and a quarter minutes remaining. Here's Besto out of the middle. The pass is perfect. Now this time Heffernan's going to kick his first goal in league football. I've backed him. He's right in front. 
He's 30 metres out. The 19-year-old from St Pat's College at Ballarat. Plays off a three handicap in golf, so he's a pretty handy sportsman. Well, this is only a 9-iron. Straight through the middle. Well done, son. And the cat's still on target for this record. Six goals won in seven and a half minutes. Yes, well, Besto burst from the centre there. He was looking for Paul Brown, full forward. But young Heffernan comes straight across and intercepts the mark. And he kicks his first goal in league football. Back in the middle. Somerville wins. McGrath gets it for the Cats, but Anderson blocks his kick. Oh, Stoneham gets it out. Miles. The ball up towards half forward. Thompson dispossessed. Comes to Wanganeen. Round the corner he goes. Well done to Denham. Sean Denham from centre wing. Steers the pass on the bounce. Considine needed sure hands. He belted McGrath to the ground. He lost it. Anderson to Terry Danaher. Danaher's kick in the direction of Kickett. Pushed out his opponent. Wallace shrugs a tackle. Comes in. A chance here. Hills just off the bench. Hooks the kick. Well, I guess it's not like the old days, Robbo. When you kicked your first goal in league football, you just went back and got a pat on the back. There we saw Martin Heffernan having a look up at the big screen just to relive the moment. Gee whiz, how far back you want to go, Jared? <laughs> Hickley's kick in, he kicked it to himself and then took the ball about 25 metres away from the square. Having a little to do back there with Wallace. Geelong get the ball up towards half forward. Man of the moment, Gary Ablett. Little kick off the ground by O'Donnell was fantastic. To his own advantage, kick towards the 50 metre line. No one there, Ken Hinkley, G reads the play beautifully. That kick goes back towards Ablett. Ablett had kick it, kick it over the top, must have infringed. The umpire will award the free kick to Gary Ablett. Well, Donald couldn't have kicked it back to Hinkley any better if he tried. When Robbo no, kicked true. his first goal in footy, the bloke on the scoreboard was putting a tin plate on a rusty nail. Yeah. <laughs> take it easy, take it easy. Billy Brownless, Anthony Danaher, outnumbered. Brownless shrugs the tackle, gives the handball away. Scott will get another one. And Scott does get another one. Six goals to Robert Scott. And Geelong kicked their 26th goal. And in any other game on the MCG, Essendon would look at their scoreline and really credit themselves with a win. 17-22, but they trail the Cats, who are magnificent, 26-13. Geelong, 31 points short of a double century. Five goals won in five and a half minutes. Wanganeen out of the middle. Ablett camped under the ball, couldn't take the mark. Off the ground by Long, up towards the 50 metre line. Considine after it. Helps out the team, but goes wide to the pocket. Kick it, backhands it. Considine again, and the ball's gone out. Well, speaking of records, Drew, they're only six points away from eclipsing their all-time highest scorer against Essendon. So a couple of records could be broken this afternoon. Right back to their exciting, attacking, brilliant best of 89. Didn't win them a flag that year, will it this year? They're better Hinkley. than 89. Centre of the ground, Forsman showed it to them, took it away from them. The pass is sensational. Scott, he's kicked three goals in the last term, but happy to give more away. And Poole kicks another one. Well, there goes the record in 1936. The highest score that Geelong could muster against Essendon was 26-18, 174. And Trevor Poole gets his moment in the history books because his second goal brings Geelong's score now to 27-13, 175. And they really are now handing Essendon a monster of a hiding. 
Yes, what's the difference now? 51 points. And there really wasn't much in it for most of the day. Geelong set it up in the second term, getting the lead. Long, Denham, and now Terry Danaher. His kick towards centre-half forward. Hocking has done a terrific job back there on Kickett. Kickett's third quarter was memorable, but Stephen Hocking has been enormous back there. Picked up by Thompson. Away he goes to Izard. Izard with two bounces, runs past the 50-metre line. The kick is ordinary. Puts Considine under enormous pressure, and Hinkley gives away the free kick. The Essendon player, Considine, will take it at half-back. Danaher off for Kieran Spawn. Considine looking to play on. Now the umpire indicating that everything is all clear. The kick goes into the path of Denham. He's being run down by Bruns, but he gets the kick away. But Bruns's pressure was just enough, and the kick fell short, and Mench is marked in the back pocket. That's Terry Danaher. I guess we should make that clear with three Danaher boys out in the ground. Mench goes towards the outer side of the ground in the vague direction of Kickett, who hasn't been the same player as he was in the third quarter. Poole. Gee, it's boggy over there. Kick by Poole up towards centre wing on the chest of O'Donnell, who's tagged Ablett today. Centering kick. Half volley, Bues. Push forward, no whistle. Stone and brilliant. Sweeping hand pass out to Poole on centre wing. Poole centres the ball. Scott leaves his man, but oh, Izard stayed with him. Wanganeen to Buick. And the Bombers moving it pretty well through the centre. Thompson. Wallace has marked well in this last quarter and has got it again. Well, push out. Is that too early, Jared? That way too early, early, I thought, Robbo. It was a pretty clear free kick. He's only played 44 games, Wallace. Still showing the signs of inexperience. Brownless. They're still chasing this record. McGrath over the centre circle. Ablett. Can't take the mark. I think the record will slip away. There's only under three minutes to go and they need four goals won. O'Donnell's kick goes towards Somerville, who marks 60 metres from goal. Peter Somerville, Hills leads, punched away by Hinckley, who's been fantastic across that half-back line. He is just so neat. That kick into the path of Stoneham, who picked it up beautifully in the muddy area on that far half-back flank area. That little push by Poole was allowed. He's kicked the centre-half forward. Adler. Now that's a free kick. Well, if that's a free kick, why wasn't Pools and why was Wallace? See, they're hard to read. Two umpires at both ends, different interpretations. Away goes O'Donnell. He kicks it to this near side wing. Attempted tap on was by Miles. Ineffective, and the umpire will bounce on centre wing in front of the members' stand. Well, they talk of introducing three umpires. The biggest problem with that, of course, is that individuals appear to have different interpretations it's probably not good for the game but it is a human factor seven goals to three in the last quarter to geelong miles pumps it up short of the goal square oh, big climb by harvey is that a free kick no brownless can't keep the ball in and there'll be a boundary throw in they played some long quarters this season geelong they passed the 30 and a half minute mark but they kick so many goals Umpires get tired running it back to the middle. Clean possession, Ablett. He kicked one of those last week at Canadian Park. Scott, what a last quarter he's had. This time he's caught red hot. Hughes. Actually, Essendon still playing it right out. Forceman, centering kick. All Essendon, O'Donnell. And away he goes to Harvey with under a minute left. Essendon may be a chance here. Harvey, loose at half back. Good shepherd by Long. Harvey's kick, not too good. Hinkley. Running through half-back, running through the centre. Oh, down he goes, Long's bump. No kick down the ground, but it's a Geelong mark anyway to Ablett. Well, did Hinkley feel that? It's a very solid bump from Michael Long on Ken Hinkley. Hinkley, almost best on the ground, has dominated across half-back today. And just gets better and better with 26 possessions. He's been in outstanding form in the last month and he was a Brownlow medal chance last year. With this man on screen, must be another. Gary Ablett, goal umpire doesn't move. Four goals to G. Ablett. There's the siren. It's all over at the MCG. And in what was a very, very good game of football, G. 
Geelong run out very comfortable winners. They've kicked 28 goals, 13, 181. And Essendon have kicked 17, 22, 124.